It's time to have a closer look at the Kodak DCS Pro 14N, a 13.9 megapixel professional full-frame DSLR that was brought to market by Kodak back in 2002. It was actually one of the first full-frame DSLRs ever built. When it hit the market, it received quite a few poor reviews. In this video, I would like to focus on the positives that this camera has to offer. Of course, I also want to talk about the negative aspects which resulted in the poor reviews. Then I want to tell you what this camera is really good for and conclude at the end of this video if it's still worth buying today. Let's start with the positives. This camera uses a 13.9 megapixel full frame sensor without an AA filter, which means that you can capture an enormous amount of detail in your shots. Number two, this camera comes with an F mount which offers a vast amount of lenses available. Number three, it has an intervalometer, which means that you can do sequence shooting, which is fully customizable with regards to interval time, number of shots, and the overall duration of your sequence. This body also offers a pre-mirror release, which is also fully customizable and is ideal when using longer shutter speeds or using the camera on a tripod and you want to prevent every type of vibration. The camera offers a dual card slot for SD and CF cards. When using manual lenses on this camera, like for example this Nikon Series E 1.8mm, you have a focus assist LED in the viewfinder, perfect for pinpointing your focus. Last but not least, the camera also has an excellent metering system, matrix 3D, center weighted or spot metering. Now that we've had a look at all the positive aspects of this camera, let's look at a few negatives that I think are essential for you to know. First of all, high noise levels when going beyond, let's say, 160 to 200 ISO, which is the reason for me to only use this camera at the lowest possible ISO setting of 80 or 100. Another major concern with this camera is battery life. I have two of these batteries that came with the camera, but the battery life, especially with these older batteries of 18 years old, is very limited.
from a camera design perspective, the vertical grip is almost unusable. You cannot get your fingers between the grip and the lens. It does have a second shutter release when using the vertical grip, but that's not really relevant because this is not a nice grip to use. A last aspect I would like to mention that is a little bit, not so much a negative, but is something that you have to be aware of, is that this camera creates DCS files, which is a codec file. Lightroom has no issue with DCS files, but for example, GIMP does. So that's something that you need to take into account. Right, so all this being said, pros and cons. What is this camera good for? Well, it's very good to get very detailed images with extremely nice colors and low noise when using it at the ISO level of 80 or 100. Also, you need to use this camera in good light conditions. Sunny conditions, outside, low ISOs, normal shutter speeds, and you will be absolutely fine. You will be able to create stunning images. So if you are looking for a camera for those types of light situations, then this is still the buy for you today. It's still able to produce excellent images. So that's what I'm going to be using it for. Natural light, in good light conditions, low ISOs, and of course, in a studio environment, with strobes and low ISOs, it also works absolutely fine. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that it was informative for you to make a decision if you would still be interested to buy a Kodak DCS Pro 14N. Thanks for watching, greatly appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, you're more than welcome to do so to keep up with all the new videos that I'm going to be bringing out. Take care, see you next time.